Hello everybody, this is your friendly neighbor, Lisa Foxy, and, uh, welcome to this game called Invite Me In. So this game looked a little interesting to me, uh, so I just wanted to try it out. And, uh, let's go in there and find out what, uh, what it's all about, and, uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it with me. And, uh, this is also, uh, the afternoon, Halloween. You guys are getting lucky, like, gonna be having about a total of three videos in total. So, I'm looking forward of showing you all the goodies here today, so. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's start. Alright, let's lead, let's, okay, the content, okay. This horror game, this is a horror game demo that contains... Contains content made to induce fear. It is not recommended by those easily disturbed. If needed, please read the content warning before continuing. Okay, let's read the content here. This game contains yandere behavior, stalking, manipulation, harassment, violent tendencies, self harm, blood, violence, suggestive themes, sudden tone shifts, and other material made to induce fear. So if you guys are already spoopedified and they not able to handle this, you have a chance to turn away if you like uh, before we continue on. But yeah. So uh, if you're with your parent, please advise yourselves. And uh, make sure and see if they are okay for you watching this. If you are sensitive to any of these material, please reconsider playing. I have to know your name. Do you? You could call me Lisa Foxy. You can, you can say the whole name, Lisa Foxy. Lisa Foxy. Oh my. What's with the dot dot dots? As the sun finally sets, lengthening the shadows all begin to bleed together until everything is covered in darkness. My path is only illuminated by the occasional street lights, and I start to become nervous again, like something bad is about to happen if not tread it with caution. I start picking up my pace as I get closer to home. I didn't plan to be out for so long, especially not at night all by myself. The grocery store bag, clutched tightly in my hands, seemed much heavier, even though it only carries a sole jug of milk that I desperately needed before leaving the house earlier. Now I'm wondering if it was really worth the trip. Turning the corner just leads to another dark road. I debate whether I should slow down to prevent tripping or just break out into a run here and now, but it's just a couple more blocks. Then I'll be back at home. For some reason, nagging at the back of my mind that didn't feel like an appealing solution either. If something dangerous really was just out of view, going back to an empty house was just like throwing a blanket over your head to keep the monsters away. It's a moment like this. I wish I didn't live alone. But I'm probably just anxious for no reason. I don't have any evidence that someone is really trying to hurt me. Just these paranoid feelings in the back of my mind that I should ignore. I really have to stop trying to freak myself out. All it's doing is causing me to lose sleep, which makes me more on edge. Focusing on getting home is the only thing I need to worry about. For now, then I can eat dinner, chill out, finally get some much-needed rest. Uh-oh. Interesting person. <laughs> A 
I'm feeling the cute creep vibe here. Just as I was about to turn down the last street, I see a figure sitting next to the sidewalk, a few feet in front of me. I immediately stop walking and try to get a better look before getting any closer. I hear the blood starts to pulse faster in my ears. They are almost fully hidden from view, so I didn't have much of a chance to see them from further away. And they are perfectly still. I feel the fear rising in me again and stay frozen in the same spot. My muscle tense, waiting to see if the stranger makes a move. They did nothing, and since it's so dark, I can't even tell if they have seen me or not. Though, I keep getting the feeling they are staring right at me. It's terrifying, but I can't just stand here forever. I want to go home. Swallowing like lingering morbid thoughts and stirring up some bravery, I began to walk again until I'm only a couple feet away from the stranger. Oh my. Okay. Once I'm closer, I finally make out some of the vague details of their face, his face, and we make eye contact. I flinch back a bit after seeing him look at me, but then I start to notice something strange. He curled up in the grass, clutching his arm tightly to his body, and I began to hear his heavy, uneven breathe over my own. He's hurt badly. As soon as I see the state he's in, I'm not only more worried than before, but now also heavily concerned for his well-being. Hello? Can you hear me all right? Are you okay? What happened? For a moment, he just keeps looking at me. His expressions is unreadable this far from any light source but he must feel scared too he doesn't respond at this point i feel he may be really really injured maybe he can't even understand me just as i reach into my pocket to try to call for help he finally speaks up S something's happened to me earlier I was just trying to walk home and I, I'm, I'm a bit hurt right now. A bit hurt? He doesn't seem like he's doing well at all. Do you need help? Can you walk? He leans forward and begins to push on his arms like he's trying to stand up, but he quickly winces and sits back to his original position. It hurts. My arm really hurts. My leg, my legs are okay though. How did you hurt your arms? Is anything broken? B broken? I, I didn't break anything. He shifts some comfortably on the ground trying to move his body to to a more upright position. He looks at me a bit nervous. It's easier to see his face like this. Now we get some options here, huh? Okay. Let's just save, just in case. His face is a bit cute too. Pretty pale. A little scary. A bit cute. I didn't notice it before, but this guy has such nice wavy hair and pretty eyes. I feel kind of bad focusing on that, but the realization truly caught me off guard. My eyes shift away to focus on anything else. I shouldn't be thinking about this, instead try to find out how to help him. I must seem so rude right now. You just don't think I'm acting weird. Is... is everything alright? 
Oh god. He thinks I'm acting weird. Everything is totally fine. I'm just a bit squee squeamish about broken bones and all. You don't have to worry. My arms aren't broken. Just a bit hurt. Well, okay. I'm glad it's not that bad then. You should really be more careful. Getting injured on the side of the road this late is really dangerous. You're right. I'm really glad you're the one who came along. It seems like I had nothing to worry about earlier to think I was so scared of him. I thought I was going to end up being mugged or murdered, but it ended up being a total overreaction. And now I'm just having a normal conversation with a stranger sitting in the grass. Well, this isn't too normal. But I still don't know anything about him. And he still seems pretty worried, too. I'd really like to know more about him, too. I should try to calm him down a bit more so I can help better. He isn't going to tell me anything like this. What's your name? My. My name, it's... It's Devin. Is it Devian? It could be pronounced Devian. Devian. Let's just go with Devian. Sounds pretty cool. Alright. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. Devian. Probably Devin, I bet you. But anyways. <laughs> He's... Seems really shy about it. I feel kind of bad asking now. That's a really nice name. It suits you. There's, there's no way I think your name is much nicer. Wait, what? I'm kidding. Thank you. But I don't think my name is any better than yours. So your name is also very nice. It's really sweet of you to say. You're such a good person. <laughs> Devin. Devian. I, I don't know what name. You know, I'm going to call him Dev. <laughs> Be like, now, just say Devin. Okay, fine. Devin. Devin seems really touched by such a simple compliment. Does he not get them often? Don't mention it. You're not too bad yourself. He seems to freeze after I say that, as if his mind is going totally blank. Not, not too bad. Thank you for thinking so. Is he blushing? He's blushing. I've never seen someone get so flustered from being called not too bad. I don't want to embarrass him more, but it's nice to see him distracted from the pain. It seems that the conversation helped a bit, even if somewhat awkwardly. He looks off to the side, trying to distract himself. Talking to a stranger like me seems to make him pretty nervous. As a sort of anxious reflect, reflex, he begins to mess with the the sleeves of his sweater. He just ends up wincing in pain after pulling on them too hard. Seeing someone be miserable like this, I can't stop myself from asking him about it one more time. Do your arms still hurt to move? Um, yeah. Devin tries to move his arms again, then gives up quickly. He pulls them back into his lap in a comforting position. Will he be able to make it back somewhere safe soon? It's horrible. His arms too hurt much to even make it home. I feel bad just leaving you here like this. Here, l let me help you walk a bit closer to your house. You shouldn't have to sit here in the dark. My house, it's still a bit of, uh, still a bit of walk away. I should be fine. I feel better already after talking to you. 
It seems I may have been a bit too worried after all. At least let me walk you to a bench nearby to rest. It's better for you than just sitting on the ground. You'll help me? That's... I really appreciate that. I just need some help standing up, then I'll be okay to move on my own. Helping him out seemed like an easy enough offer, but actually finding a good way to lift him up gracefully was harder task than I guessed. Setting down my grocery bags I, of lonely milk on the sidewalk, I walk a bit closer to Devon. We both look at each other trying to figure out the best way to go about this. I want to lift him up without hurting him or making him uncomfortable. Eventually he moves his leg until they are bent under him, almost in a kneeling position. Then I moved beside him, wrapping my arms around his torso. As I increase the pressure of my hold on him, his breathing becomes even more labored and unsteady. His body becomes incredibly tense despite how carefully I try to lift. Are you okay? I'm trying to not touch your arms too much, but let me know if anything hurts. It... It really doesn't hurt that bad. I can barely feel it. Feeling a bit more re reassured after knowing he's okay, I give one final lift until he's up on his feet. We did it! Hopefully you're all good now. <laughs> we know he's not on Gog. Is there anything else I can do to help? I'm here if you need any... Before I can even finish what I was about to say, about to say Devin began to wobble over after trying to stand on his own. I quickly reach back over to hold him steady, and he ends up leaning back into my arms, clutching my shoulder to keep from falling. Oh my, um, what happened? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? I could call someone for you or get you a ride to a clinic if something is wrong. I think it's just my blood pressure after sitting there too long. I'm fine, honestly fine. Do you think you could try walking on your own, or is that too much? I think I need a bit more time before walking on my own. I could just sit back down if it's too much trouble for you. Not too much trouble at all. If you are okay with it, you can lean on me while we walk to the bench. I don't know how much you feel like moving right now. If... I have your support. I'll be okay to move. Okay. I'll try to walk slowly and not put too much strain on you again. We move in a side-by-side -side position where his arm is over my shoulder. As I wrap my arm around his back, we walk continuous at a steady pace as we get halfway down the street. I feel Devin's breathing as he pushes against me for stability. It seems to still be quick and heavy. His body also feels cold and damp. Just how long had he been there by himself? Is he really okay? I look over to glance at Devin's face, which is completely pale with a small smile creeping onto his, lip, his lips. The image is almost frightening with the state he's in. Like he doesn't even know how bad his condition is. No, like he doesn't even care. Uh-oh. He noticed me staring and his unreadable gaze meets mine in an instant. It feels he can read every thought and intention running through my mind. Suddenly his eyes soften as his grin turned more friendly. But the off-putting paleness is still there. You really are too kind to me, even helping me walk. For a second, I 
feel I can't move. I can hardly breathe while looking at him directly. As I said, no trouble. I have to force myself to turn away from him and continue to focus on walking. But I can still feel him right next to me as my heart hammers faster in my chest, and I pray he doesn't notice. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Maybe it's because we've met in such a weird situation, but he looks at me differently than anyone else I've ever met. And I wonder if it's really such a bad thing. I straighten my resolve and begin to push forward again. We finally get to the end of the street and turn the last corner and the bench is just a few feet away. Here we are. You should be able to rest right over there. I gently put him over until he's able to safely sit down on his own. He seems a bit shaken up still, but he's much better off on a clean bench near a street light than on the ground in the dark. The th Thank you for taking me all the way here. It, it was considerate of you. Even though Devin says that, he doesn't look relieved at all. I feel a bit guilty ending it like this, but just how much more can I really do? Hell, he didn't even want me to do this. I'm glad I could help. I really hope you feel better soon. It was nice to meet you, Devin. Just as I'm about to walk away, his hand suddenly grabs mine. Uh, did you need something else? I have to head home soon, but is everything okay? He looked down at his hand as he slowly let go of mine. I guess he grabbed my hand without thinking because he quickly pl places his hand back to his lap nervously. Sorry, I just thought you should know. Your grocery bag. My grocery bag? You left you left your grocery bag behind earlier. It's still on the sidewalk. I looked down at the empty hands. And yes I did. It <laughs> Sorry, I looked down at my empty hands and realized that, yes, I did leave my milk behind. I had nearly gone home without one, without the one thing I came outside for. I guess it is easy to forget stuff after an eventful evening. I just had, but still, I still feel a bit silly. Wow. I really did forget about about it. Thanks for reminding me, Devin. I'm gonna go run back and grab it now. I'll see you on my way back. Before he has a hunch of a chance to answer, I start running to the street corner we just came from. I make a turn and begin to walk back in previous road to where I left my milk. I'm really glad that Devin said something because I would have felt so ridiculous once I got home. It was the only reason I came out here and went through this wild evening after all. It only takes a few seconds to find a lonely bag sitting on the sidewalk. The time, the time makes me realize just how slow we are walking before. A distance that felt like it took ages to traverse it was really a short jog. A quick glance over the milk to make sure it's still in good condition. The jug looks perfectly fine. It was only out here by itself for a minute, but better to check than to drink bad milk. I skip the bag into my arms and start heading back. I should really say bye to Devin before heading home and check on him one last time. 
I run back to the bench and I see him sitting there just as I left him. Well, something seems a bit off. He seems just unwell as ever. In fact, he's not even looking at me now. Is he ready for me to just leave now? Or does he even know I'm here? I step a bit closer, so I'm right in front of him. I try to duck down to get one last look at his face. Well, I got my milk, so I guess I'll be headed back home now? As I said before, it was nice to meet you. Get home safe, alright? Just as I'm about to leave, I finally notice the dark stains forming all over his sleeves and onto the rest of his clothes. Earlier, they were small enough that they could be mistaken for shadow, especially in the dim light, but now it seems much more obvious. Is... is that blood? Now it's impossible to ignore it. The panic hit me like an anvil as I feel my heart drop. I looked down at the arm and I had used to help support his body when we walked over here. There was a smudge of crim crimson streaked across my hand that I didn't see earlier. He was bleeding. He was bleeding too much. It didn't seem possible. How did I notice... How did I not notice how bad it was? There was blood dripping down his hands now. Did I make it worse? Did I hurt him while carrying him here? No, I didn't mean to hurt him. Will he be alright? I lifted Dalen's shoulder to look at his face. His eyes seemed hazy, like he might pass out soon. You need to get to a hospital immediately. I'll call in an ambulance. Why didn't you tell me you were bleeding this much? What happened to you? It's just a little bit of blood. A, a bit of blood? This seems like much more than a bit. Is it really that bad? Are you worried about me? Yes! Now, just show me how you got injured. Or tell me, at least. <laughs> right. I walk closer and try to reach over to grab his hand. Suddenly, Devin moves up from the bench and stands in front of me. Lisa Foxy, please, just listen to me. I need help, but I... Devin seems to inhale deeply, like he's trying to rise all the courage and willpower he has. I want to rush over to help him sit back down safely, but I feel frozen in place. I just examine his face waiting for a sign to grab steady him again. His eyes glanced at mine, shifting from assessing to pleading, like he really wants to, needs to tell me something. He still seems physically weak, but it's almost like he's even more energized now, like something in the past, or something in the past few seconds totally Rena Renovated. <laughs> Reveal. I can't t spell. I can't talk tonight. Oh my god. Revelated. Revelated <laughs> his conviction. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying. Don't record at night, Foxy. This is what happens. We both wait as he finally gets his bearings. Will you please hear me out? Yeah, I'll listen. Whoa. Devin steps a bit more into the light and raises his arms halfway into the air. It's like he's trying to reveal the injuries without moving his sleeves, like he's trying to shield me from just how bad it is. But all I see is more blood he seems to sense my concern. I didn't want to worry you too much, but it seems the state I'm in looks quite bad. To be honest, 
really... It, it hurts really bad, too. He, he grimaces as he looks down at his arms. Maybe he didn't even let himself think of how painful it was before. I didn't... I didn't want you to know. My arms are so much worse than I let on. Then why don't you let me call for help? Someone did this to me. They're trying to hurt me. Someone hurt you? Who? Devin looks at me with a pained expression. Then he stares at his arms again, looking at the stains forming up along his sleeves. A stalker. A stalker? What? Are you being serious right now? I feel my blood begin to run cold. Out of all things, a stalker. It's true. I didn't really know what was happening until it was too late. Next thing I know, I'm on the side of the street and bleeding. My arms hurt so much, but I couldn't move. I was afraid I was going to be found again and, and killed. But then you found me instead, and I felt safe. I hope you understand, but I really can't go to the hospital like this. I could tell my attacker would know that's where I needed to go and try to find me there. So I... I'm too afraid, just the thought of it happening. I was about to... I was about to argue with De... Devin, but... Seeing the fear in his eyes and the way his body is shaking, I don't have the heart to disagree. It's okay, Devin. I understand. You're not going to call for help, right? No, not if you don't want me to. But why can't we call the police? You might be in real danger. Police? I really don't think that's a good idea. It makes me too nervous, plus, I don't even think they would take me serious after not believing me before. Looking at the blood continuing to drip from his arm, from his hands, I feel it's hard to not take Devin seriously at this moment. But if he feels so certain about it, I shouldn't doubt him about this either. There has to be some solution, right? He can't just deal with this by himself and risk getting hurt even more. I want him to be able to get help. His life could be at risk, and I don't think I could go home only to see him on the news tomorrow. Then what are we supposed to do? You can't keep walking around like that. I just need some place safe. I really don't think I can just be home alone while someone is after me. Then, if there were some basic medical supplies, I could make it work. I patched myself up from, from worse. I feel like an acquitted so solution, but my mind is racing too much. <laughs> as I give myself a dominant male voice. <laughs> but my mind is racing too much to think of a good alternate al alternative myself. But one thing I know for sure, I can't just leave him like this. I may be terrified, but that's nothing compared to what Devin is going through at this moment. I've been on edge the past few weeks with this thought someone has been watching me, but he's living it. I feel a bit silly trying to relate. I can't help but feel a sense of connection though. Like it was fate that I happened to be the one here to help him. If anyone would know what it's like to live with this fear and how it can affect you, it would be me. 
And wouldn't I want someone to do the same for me if I was ever in such a dangerous situation? As for... As I've been going through my reasoning in my mind, Devin just... Devin has just been staring at me with a hope of expression. If you need some place to go, you can come to my house. Really? I... I could come to your house? I have a first aid kit I bought recently. I'm not sure how helpful it will be, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, that... that will work fine. I just... sorry. I can't believe you're really helping me. Me. I'm not going to leave you out here alone or just hand you off to people you don't feel safe with. I really... I really... <clears throat> sorry. I really do want to help you, Devin. And I find myself really meaning those words. We stare at each other for a moment, assessing the bizarre situation that's been laid out quickly in front of us. But the look on his face, he seems so happy. Ecstatic, even. This just shows that I definitely made the correct choice, right? Or did I even have a choice to not help someone in this much peril? It doesn't feel like I did at all. I try to push down any feelings of uncertain uncertainty and move on to the next objective. So, we shouldn't stay out here too long, right? Isn't it kind of dangerous? Yes, you're right. We should leave right now. Devin's head whips around to survey the area, but he seems quickly satisfied. I think we're safe, but it's best to be careful and hurry along. All right, then. Let's go. I instinctively walked over to Devin and leaned against him, moving my arm across his back again. Lisa Foxy, what are you doing? You still need help with walking, don't you? After all, after all of this, I... Can't have you falling over on me. Of course. Sorry, I nearly forgot. It surprised me. I can't help but smile at how flustered he still gets at this point, even with how horrible his, his night has gone. Even though we just met, Devin seems to enjoy being around me. I'm happy to think I could, m I could make what must be one of the worst days ever, a bit brighter. Devin moves against my arms and we begin walking together again. Maybe it's from doing it before, but it feels easier this time. My house is just a few buildings down, so you don't have to wait too long. And then you can just stay with me for the night and call whoever you need to call in the morning. This is really too kind of you. I don't deserve it. But, at the same time, I can't reject the offer. Don't feel bad for it. I really do want to help you. Am I? Is there a reason why you want to help me? Or are you just the type of person who would help anyone? Devin's face looks a bit upset when he says this. Does he think I have weird motives? I'm not really sure. I just think if I were in your shoes, I'd want someone to look out for me like this. I... I bet there is someone who would do anything for you. The strange compliment makes my heart thump quickly in my chest. I tried to ignore it, but it's soon its soon all I hear. It makes me feel a bit happy in some way, and I get flustered, and I get flustered myself. 
To distract myself from the noise in my head, in my own head, I look out into the darkness, trying to search for any stalking figures. I make sure we aren't being followed and there doesn't seem to be another soul in sight. For the past few weeks, I consistently been seeing moving shadows and feeling eyes on the back of my head. But for the first time in a while, I don't feel anything at all. I feel safer. And, as I finally see the front of my house in view, I think the rest of this wild night is going to actually be okay. You have reached the end of the demo. Thank you for playing Invite Me In. Continue the game to see how the rest of the night unfolds later this year. Okay. The hearts above give you a clue on what path you were headed on. So there were different possible other routes, perhaps? Interesting. Well, I still have another game for you guys, so I'm gonna try this other game too. But that was Invite Me In, and I am pretty curious of what kind of other routes uh, it could have been, uh, what it could have led me to. But let's go ahead and I'm going to hop to the other game so you guys kind of get two games here today. So give me a moment and I will hop to it. Alright. So we made it to the second video that I said I was going to do. Uh, so this game, uh, I will be sure to tell you what it is after the warning. So again, warning. This game is a demo. It is intended for a 18 and up audience only. This game de demo contains sexual content, eye strain, slight torture, graphic violence, mild shake, mild screen shake, and death. The full game will have added trigger warnings later on. So, again, keep in mind about these warnings. But hopefully it's not too bad, right? So we will find out as we carry on in here. All right, so I realize I gotta move the sound here for you guys. So there we go. Welcome to this game called You and Him. So this is another one of the uh, unique, different games. Kind of like another male yandere type of game out there. I, I want to try them out too. It's not just the females always getting all the glories. I just want to see how the guys are. Let's go ahead. You. Middle of nowhere. 3.32 p.m. In other news, Hit Boy Band. Cake will be playing live tomorrow night at Santa Alley Stadium in Park Bend, Arizona. According to our source, Concert tickets sold out within the seconds of their intentional initial online release date despite the fact that a massive influx of these users caused the website itself to crash. Luckily, they managed to get the site up and running again, but many people were upset since they were forced to log back in and many missed out on buying tickets because of this. Thousands took a took to twatter <laughs> twatter. Okay, anyways, to vent their frustrations while others made light of the situation by making and sharing memes. Many of these posts went viral and got St. Alley Stadium trending for 3 days straight on Twitter itself. The DJ lets out a huff of breath. I can't believe what I'm seeing in these reports. Can you, Kenny? The car radio crackles. 
and a new voice joins in on the conversation, his tone coming across as both juvile and borderline cartoonish. Not in the slightest, and I'm just as stunned as you are. It's fantastic to see these young men who started from modest backgrounds rise to take the world by storm. I don't think I've seen a boy band craze this band since the 90s and early 2010s. But I don't think those been compared to what we're seeing today. Don't you agree, Bob? Bob, the first radio DJ who spoke, let let out a giant guffaw. Boy, is that an understatement. Even my husband adores their latest hit single, The Way You Make Me Sway, which is saying something. I thought your husband hated modern day music. My point exactly. If they can make my husband love their sound, then you know they got the that something special that old men like him and I can't even ignore. When they start playing Hake's latest single, he turned down the dial on the radio, choosing instead to focus on the long stretch of road before you. The blistering heat already makes it hard to concentrate. You don't need the added distraction. Especially considering you driven almost 323 miles thanks to your aunt's pleas to gather up all your uncle's val valuables and drop them off at this new airport. I mean, sorry, this new apartment in the next six towns over and, and are now on the return driven home sans guns. You try turning her down but your mom called and forced you to agree something about being a good relative mention of of past actions where your aunt almost didn't treat you like dirt and yada 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 at that point you just wanted to hang up and go back to your hermit crab lifestyle so you agree and took an ob obscene amount of guns from your aunt to give to your uncle. Due to the terms and conditions of their divorce, the judge ruled that since your aunt got ownership of the house, your aunt needed to fork over her collection of guns and hand them over to your uncle. Getting the aforementioned aforementioned guns out of her house was a nightmare. The woman kept screaming every time you load the gun into your car. You had to restrain her when she kept trying to lunge for your trunk, saying he wouldn't know if one or two were missing. When you refused to budge on the matter, she became inconsolable and ran inside the house, shutting herself in the bathroom for a solid 20 minutes before you needed to leave. When she returned, her demeanor returned to normal. Well, at least for her. Relatives are weird, man. Speaking of weird, how long was the stretch of the road again? You could have worn it out. It was a heck of a lot shorter first go around. Look, not to mention, <laughs> you need to go to the restroom. You regret not stopping by the gas station 50 miles back, actively cho choosing to ignore the huge warning sign that said next gas station in 100 miles. A terrible decision considering the current state of your <laughs> bladder. 
You mull over your lack of options when something in the distance catches your attention. As your car eats up the distance between you and you make the shape of a large lumber, lumbering figure walking along the side of the road with their thumbs jutted out and raised above their head. Huh? What's a hitchhiker doing all the way out there? Out here? Never mind. You don't have time for this. Not to mention the fact that your mother always warned about shady hitchhikers. Letting this man into your car wreaks a future trouble. Best to avoid situations like that altogether. When you pull right up behind him, you notice a distant limp to his walk and blood blooming out from his pants leg. Seeing his injury causes guilt to settle in. He's clearly hurt and needs help. There's no one else around but you. You wrestle with your options when he suddenly collapses onto the heat of the side of the road. Chiz. There goes your self-preservation. You park just a way ahead of him and launch out of the driver's seat, praying to gee, that you don't believe in that you don't believe in that he's okay. When you reach him, you fall to your knees and gently nudge his shoulders, only to garner no response. Come on, please be okay. You lean down and press your head against his chest, and you feel it rise and fall, the sound of a fainted heartbeat. Good, he's still breathing. You sit back up and try gently shaking his shoulders again. Sir? Sir? Can you hear me? Ugh. He's also conscious, another good sign. Don't worry, sir. I'm gonna call for help, okay? You pull out your cell phone, ready to dial an emergency helpline, when a hand latches onto your wrist in a voice like grisp, grip, and the man beneath you adjusts himself into sitting position. You're taken back by the man's fierce gaze glaring at you through a veil of raven-colored hair. Don't call anyone. Fine. Yes, but... Nails dig into your forearm. Not enough to draw blood, but enough to warn you he means business. Oh, is this an assassin? Okay. I said I'm fine. Mm. Oh, well, okay, I'll listen. You lower your phone, exiting out of the phone app without a second glance at the screen. All right, but at least let me take a look at your leg. He visibly relaxes at your compliment, nature and nods, leaning back so you can roll up his pants leg and examine the damage laying underneath. Blood coats his wound on the legs and you can't even see the extent of the injury when there's so much you need to clean it off wait right here you head for your car and locate a box cutter knife hidden underneath the driver's seat cutting off the bottom half of your skirt you grab the once cold but not warm water bottle you brought with you for your mini road trip and use it to soak stray pieces of the fabric you toss your box cutter back onto the driver's seat before returning to the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker looks up upon hearing your approaching footsteps. You watch as his eyes widen in equivalent of large saucers, his lips slightly parted in surprise at his gaze, before in the new patch of exposed exposed skin. He studies the shape of your body, tracing over each and every part 
of you with his new eyes. You grow frustrated at the attention, but you also don't hate it. It's nice in a way. You're a little disappointed when he avert his gaze, wondering if you misinterpreted the situation until he bites at his bottom lip as if he's done something naughty. Your heart flutters at the implica implications. His reaction's kind of cute. You lower yourself to his level and try to ignore the blush spreading across your own cheeks. He's really attractive. A fact that you couldn't help but notice when you rushed to his side and saw that extense expression like an arrow striking through your helpless little heart. But that's not the only thing that garnered your attention. This hitchhiker is Adam, the lead singer of Cake. Oh, he's, a, he's one of the singers. What's he doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? So, I couldn't help but notice this, but you're Adam, right? The hitchhiker hesitates before nodding. Okay, so I don't mean to sound rude, but what are you doing all the way out here? Asking strangers for rides. Adam rubs the back of his head, almost sheepish, in his answer. I accidentally drove my car into a ditch a few miles back, and I forgot my phone at the studio, so I couldn't really reach out and call anyone. Figured on and off chance that someone drove by and I could bum a, a ride. He smiles in. Guess I got lucky you showed up when you did. You're a lifesaver. <laughs> You're almost blinded by that smile. No wonder his fangirls go crazy. Charging your pounding heart to calm down, you try to concentrate on the conversation at hand and get started on cleaning his leg. You need to f you need to focus. Oh, was the uh oh was the crash how you got hurt? Adam shakes his head. I cut through m I cut my thigh open while hiking with my friends a couple of weeks ago. One or three branches was a little too sharp and gave me this as a souvenir. The doctor stitched me up, but I guess it tore back open since I started walking. He chuckles to himself. I didn't even notice if you can believe it. You're surprised to hear this considering he's got a performance going on later tonight. I mean, later tomorrow night. Surely he should let it heal before going back on stage. Well, hopefully when I hopefully when I drive you back to town, we can get you to a doctor to get it taken care of. I'm sorry I can't do anything else in the meantime. Don't worry. You've been a big help. You flush at his praises. The smoothness of his voice and the way he says that makes you feel things you haven't felt in a long time. In places you haven't felt in a long time. You attempt to focus on the task at hand, wiping away the thick, congealed blood. But it's hard to concentrate when all you can think about is the fact that your hands are near his thighs and, oh gosh, you're turning beet red from the thought alone. Nimbling at your bottom lip, you peer up at him and find his gaze locked into your hands with blistering intensity. You can't tell if he wants to rip your hands off, his leg, or to guide them to, to other <laughs> The heat warming your body desires the latter. Something wrong. His gaze suddenly flicks upwards and you jump flustered that he's caught you staring 
Nothing. Just a little daze is all. Probably because of the heat. You duck your head and redirect, redirect your attention downwards, ignoring the little devil inside of you. Since you're back on track, you didn't notice this before, but the blood on his leg is a bit weird. It's chipped and peeled away like a dried paint instead of smearing. What the... Oh! The man withdraws a small sliver knife tucked into the waistband of his jeans and lunges at you. You don't even have a spare moment to react before he drives a weapon into your chest. Confused and terror battle in your mind, adrenaline pumps through your veins as you try to fight him off. You scratch at his chest, his face, anywhere you can dig your nails into, but he scoffs and pins your arms down with his knees, and you watch in horror as he plunges a knife into your exposed chest again and again. Oh my goodness. A violent! Oh no! You don't even have time to ask why as the world goes dark. Oh my. Wait a minute. So there's an Hold it. Skip. Okay. We're not gonna listen. To stand our ground. He's insane if he thinks you're just gonna let this whole thing slide. He's clearly injured and definitely needs dressing for that wound on his leg. You yank your arm out and grasp and press the phone to your ear, standing up and turning your back to the man as you glare at the sun beating down at you. Could it be any hotter? An operator picks up. Hello, what's your emerg- He cuts off mid-sentence as the hitchhiker plucks the phone out of your hand and drops it into the ground as he crushes the device underneath a scuffed butt. A, 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 a scuffed boot. Goodness, his scuffed boot. Hands in his pocket, looking almost bored as if he does so. Once he's done destroying your phone, you work three years in customer service to pay off. He runs a hand through his hair and reveals an all too familiar smile. And there's more about him. Spring edition. On his journey, singing in the small town church choir and becoming the lead singer of Cake. Get his look. Oh my. Okay. You recognize those features spanned across multiple blogs on the internet S stratosphere from the from his gleaming white teeth, which were a perfect advertisement for the ten toothpaste commercials he sponsors to the scar on his eyebrow that fangirls obsessed over the lead singer of cake adam you open your mouth to comment wondering how a man like him ended up here when he rushes forward and plunges something into your shoulder whoa you're caught off guard his monument pushing you backwards and your head cracks painfully against the ash asphalt the man stands over Stands over your for a moment as he wipes the blood off his knife by using his shirt as a makeshift handkerchief. He smiles cruelly as he crawls over your collapsed body with a predatorial predatory gleam in his eyes. Thighs boxing boxing in Oh, okay. So he's uh okay, he's trapping me. Oh goodness. And you're underneath him is his hand pins your wrist over your head. You watch as he reaches into his back pocket to reveal 
a phone of its own. You tap something on the screen. All of a sudden, you're blinded by light. You're, you're try blinking the stars out of your eyes, confused by what just occurred. Shoot. I left the flash on. Sorry about that. This son of a bitch. You kick your legs and buck your hips in a violent effort to toss him off your body, throwing your weight around in hopes that you'll catch him off balance, but he doesn't seem phased in the slightest. You give up after exhausting yourself. Dang it all. Once you've settled, Adam taps his phone screen again, and this time, there's no blinding light. He stares at the picture he just took for the moment and nods to himself, then shoves his phone into his back, his back pocket, satisfied by whatever he sees. You've got a pretty photogenic face. This pictures. The pictures will print out great. Don't you think? Try spitting in his face, but it misses by a landslide. Aw, oh, that wasn't very nice. Nice went out the window when you stabbed me. Maybe I wouldn't have stabbed you if you listened to me and hung up the phone. Yeah, right. You get the dis distinctive feeling that he's lying through his teeth. You don't peg him as the honest type, considering he's probably got a bunch of skeletons in his closet if he's attacking strangers for shins and giggles. What did you want my photo for? Scrapbooking? His face darkens at your retort. How is that any of your business. Surely he's joking. You look at his tense expressions. Nope. He's 100% serious, but at least he's not cutting you up, cutting you open like a stab of meat. I mean, slab of meat. If you can keep him talking, maybe you'll find a way out of this mess. A Christmas present for your dear old mom and dad, then? <laughs> Don't talk about my mother. Oh? Does he have mommy issues? No, nope, maybe he has daddy issues. Better yet, maybe both. What about your dad? Can we talk about him? Adam considers you a moment obviously confused by your cavalier attitude despite the current situation, but he's curious enough to see where this leads. What do you want to know about him? Does he snore like a boar? Did he play catch with you as a kid? Does he barbecue, watch footballs on Sunday? Does he make corny dad jokes? What does he do for a living? To answer your question in order, no, no, yes, no. He's a preacher for my hometown church back in Tennessee. Ah, a fan of the big guy in the sky, eh? I'm guessing you went to church a lot as a kid. Adam considers you a moment. Ah. So that's your angle. I'm sorry? You guess as his nails dig into your wound shoulder. Tears prick at the corner of your eyes, threatening to spill over. And you have to bite your lip to keep them in place. No way will you let this man get the self-satisfaction of seeing you cry. You want to keep talking. Until you can think of an escape plan. Is that it? Well, I'm sorry to inform you. That won't happen. We're alone. I'm armed with a knife. 
and this highway is almost always deserted. Very few cars drive along this highway, and only reason people tend to travel here is for nefarious means or out of sheer desperation, but it's almost always the latter. I would know. I s scoped out this place ahead of time. He gives a sadistic grin. But you know what? Why not? I'll play this game for a little while longer. It could be fun. After all, giving you that small shiver, liver, of hope that someone might pass by and rescue you from your fate. Speaking of fate, let's talk about something related to that. Destiny itself. Don't worry. I promise this all circles back to my father. Now, let's see. He pauses a moment to gather his thoughts before he begins talking again. My dad. You know, it's funny. Despite being religious and believing in the power of free will, my father always thinks that destiny plays a big role in our everyday lives. He always says that while some things are in a, in our control, other things are milestones made by God. Teach us pivotal life lessons planned for in advance. A test of sorts, you could say. He digs his nails deeper into your wound, and you bite your lip so hard it bleeds. Tell me something. Do you believe in destiny? <laughs> That's an honest answer. Hmm. Well, sure. Mom always said honesty was the best policy no matter the circumstances. I mean, if you end up lying, I'm pretty sure he's still going to hurt you the same way. Sure, it might get you killed here, but... He's probably already planning on doing that anyways. No. You admit through clenched teeth. Especially when people like you exist. What sick, sick mystical BS would send me to someone like you as a test? He stares down at you for a moment, dissecting you with his eyes. You feel like one of those dead frogs they use in biology class to teach teenagers how bodies work and functions with your limbs and all out pinned at your sides. You get the idea. Science stuff. <laughs> Alright. You wait for him to slice you wide open in response to giving the wrong answers, but to your surprise, he doesn't. Funny. I thought you'd try to lie and appease me. Typically, when I ask someone a question after they find out their lives is on the line, they try to fit their answers to one they think I'd like. I mean, if you're gonna end up killing, what's, I mean, okay, alright. I, however, find honesty to be one of the most honorable traits a person can have. In fact, I prefer your honesty, even if our views differ. So you believe in destiny. Why does... So you believe in destiny. Why does that not surprise me? Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> My bad. So you believe in destiny. Why does that not surprise me? Sorry about that. Oh, I don't. I was just curious to see how you'd answer. You wanted to get to know me, after all. Even if it was just to buy time, I figured I'd still extend the same courtesy. <laughs> I 
I normally don't let my guard down and talk about my father like this. Aren't you happy? This shows how special you are to me. Well, narcissistic m much? Oh, I bet you say that to all your victims. His eyes narrow at your sarcasm, but you continue because you can't stop yourself. I truly am the luckiest person alive. I don't deserve you or your kindness. You really aren't like other serial killers. I... I Uh-oh. He reclaims his knife and buries it deep into your shoulder, effectively cutting you off. When he withdraws the blade, he examines the fresh blood, coating the knife, and frowns. I appreciate the honesty to an extent, but you'll you'll fare better if you keep your mouth shut. Make me. A childish resort in the grand scheme of things, but you'll be damned if he's getting the last word in edgewise. You watch as he angles the blade, lifting it high over your head head before bringing it down towards your st sternum and with the most cold blood expression. You have to think quickly and throw him off his guard to ensure your survival. Huh. The logic answer is to actually claw his eyes, but I- This is the logic answer. The inner female is literally saying, just do this. But watch, she's gonna be like, nah, that doesn't work. Alright, just go, just go pure kindness, because clearly, maybe, I mean, though going kindness last time did get me killed. <sighs> Alright. All right, let's see what happens. There. You grit your teeth through the pain. But it's the first thing that comes to mind. Before he can react, you grab him by the scruff of his shirt and pull him down, caught off balance, and he drops his knife and embraces his hands on the ground, unable to avoid your waiting mouth. His dark eyes go comically wide, as your lips touch. He goes still for a total of two seconds, which doesn't give you enough time to grab his knife and aim it at his jugular. You expected him to shove you away, to scrub his mouth clean of you, to drive his knife down in his digest. What you don't expect is for him to return your kiss with desperate urgency. He's a man who sought thrill from murder, but from the looks of it, hasn't experienced much, if any, intimate interaction. You've found an undeniable weakness. He's so distracted, eyes lid fluttered shut, in pure, unembodished pleasure, that you take the opportunity to use your other hand to search for his knife. Your hand swipes over the dirts and rocks and ash halt, asphalt until your hand manages to lead, land on a hit of the blade. You make sure you have a firm grip and you lodge the knife deep into his side. He cries out, rolling off your body clearly not understanding what just happened. Free of his weight, you take a golden opportunity to sprint towards your car. He calls after you, but you don't look back. Hopping into the driver's side, you grev your engine floor and it pressing pedals to the metal. You see him limping after you in the rear view mirror and watch as he grows smaller before disappearing completely. 
adrenaline pumps through your veins, heart sludgering, I mean, struggling against your ribcage. Struggling, sorry. For hours on the drive back to your town, you check your rear view mirror to see if he somehow managed to teleport into your back seat, afraid he'll finish the job. I'm okay now. You say when you see your hometown on the horizon, I'm okay. I did it! Elsewhere, 9.30. Adam manages to return to his hotel room without much trouble after calling in a few favors. He's lucky you didn't hit anything vital. Just a flesh wound that he managed to stitch together himself. The action of pushing a needle through skin like second nature thanks to practicing on previous victims. He lies back down on a king-size mattress and spit from walking under the crisp sun and getting hurt to boot. The sheets feel cool and oddly ticklish beneath him. Everything feels ticklish since that kiss from early from hours earlier, like his nerves ending are standing on end, hypersensitive to everything he touches. He absent mindly strokes his own bottom lip as he can still taste you. The shape of your body presses against his and the way you moved under him ingrained into his memory, a permanent stamp on his consciousness. He wants to see you again, to touch you, to kiss you, to claim you, to mark you. Unwarrant image of you invade his mind, graphic deceptions of your bodies intertwined, fueling his lust and causing his hand to dip down in response. He Whoa, okay. <laughs> Alright. He was unable to take much more of this converged heat he need to get you out of his system when a woman flashes behind his eyelid. He stares or she stares at Adam in disappointment, tears cascading down her cheeks and over her cuts and scars. She shakes her head. Just like him, she mouths. Adam gasps and rips his hand away, tears prick pricking at the corners of his eyes in frustration. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your face flashes behind his eyelids, the sun illuminating your frame like an angel descending from the heavens. You pull him down again, you kiss him. Enough. He chokes out and sobs and curls into a fatal position, wishing he could bleed you, bleed you out of his pores and untaint himself, but you left your mark. If he wants to get rid of this forever, this, this fever, this disease, burning within him, he needs to find the source and destroy it. Adam calms himself by taking a deep breath and letting a plan formulate in his mind. As long as he focuses on the future task at hand, he can handle this odd feeling overwhelm, um, overwhelming him and carry out what, ne what needs doing. When he opens his eyes, they shined with a determined light. And he promises himself he'll find you again. Chapter 1! Okay. 143. Adam only requires a cheap lock. Picking kit bought off the Amazon and breaks into your apartment. How did he find out where I live? A weak sense. Did you really think this would keep him out? 
it's almost too easy the way he steps inside pausing next to your coat rack and allow his eyes time to adjust in the darkness he scans the room observing the dark shake shape of your ratty couch and cheap coffee table that spills with fabric he wonders briefly if you started in a sewing project of sorts when his eyes catch on something far more interesting a door left ajar that he can only assume is your bedroom he slips out of his boots and places them next to yours it's almost like he's your husband returning from work and ready to join his spouse in bed it's almost too in it's intimate in a way he really doesn't like the feeling it gives him but he needs to stay quiet wearing large clunky boots would reveal his presence he wants to surprise you to catch you off guard like how you managed to catch him off guard with that kiss on the highway he'll never forgive you for it only the thrill of hunt manages to subdue any inappropriate thoughts that might overwhelm him he doesn't want to feel this way you know he doesn't like the fact that anyone can wield the sort of power over him because it can easily turn into a weapon which makes him vulnerable not only that but the inherent wrongness itches at his skin you're a forbidden fruit that tricked him into taking a bite he wants to laugh at how his name suits him now did his father think he'd give into his desires did he believes he grow up and become just like him do what's right a broken wom woman whispers from the darkness don't go down this path his words encourages his already determined footsteps I protected you from him she feels his resolve he's going to kill the one who tainted him and become pure again Adams positions himself in front of the door and wondering what awaits him are you planning something or are you really naive enough to think you'd be safer after you escaped the first time surely you're prepared for me aren't you his voice carries into your bedroom but Grinner's no response do you have a gun aimed at my head a bat next to your nightstand or do you call the cops again no answer now's your chance kill me before I kill you Adam taunting you probably because you taunted him in his dreams for so long still you don't give into his games he grows frustrated and tired of waiting it's now or never Adam draws out the knife and tucked into the waistband of his jeans your blood from the other day still coats the sliver blade the color transforms into a deep reddish brown because he can't bring himself to wash it until he uses it to take your life the single action the taking of your life with his blade will bring everything full circles at least he'll be free Adam notices a small bed tucked into the corner of the bedroom the window blinds are lifted allowing a small amount of moonlight to spill into the room illuminating the mass of blankets where you potentially rest they shift signals that someone indeed lies underneath them Adam approaches the bed without hesitation rips a blanket off of your body and onto the floor you startled 
awake, your eyes latching onto him, dazed and confused by the sudden shift in realities. You were dreaming one moment, and now you're drugged, kicking and screaming into the waking world. How did you not know he was on his way? You really are naive. He thought you were smarter than this. He is insulted that you managed to escape. How could someone like this? The words escape him when he sees you again glowing from the moonlight, caught off guard by you yet again. He keeps his eyes on your face, afraid to wonder anywhere else. Then... You pull him down and drown him in the blood red of your lust. Oh my. In the middle of your heated exchange, you stared down at him, a deity perched over their royal throne. He shudders under your gaze, vulnerable. Slick with sweat. He breathless as he asks, Why did you stop? Because I'm curious. Your body shifts as he grits his teeth, holding back a soft whimpers. His hands going to your hips as he, as if holding you will ground him. A smirk tugs at the corner of your lips. Do you really like this? Do you like what I'm doing to you? It's like she's a yandere herself. Adam nods. Yes. Gee, yes. He never felt so good in his life. Adam swallows thickly, eyes flashes fluttering, unable to concentrate, but forcing himself to pay attention to your next words. Do you want me? Adam answers before he can even think about what he's saying. Yes. How much do you want me? More than anything. One last question. Finally. Do you still want to kill me? Adam stares up at you. Yes, of course he does. Killing you means he's done his job. He can sleep peacefully at night, knowing he'll no longer hurt the, hurt the people around you. Wait. He can sleep peacefully at night, knowing you'll no longer hurt the people around you. Okay. He opens his mouth. Then closes it. Yes. Just say yes. He tries again and fails miserably. He continues staring. You continue staring at him, patient, while you wait for him. While you wait for your answer, your body still hovering over his. Maybe he just doesn't want you to stop. Is that it? Like he's afraid you'll stop making him feel good for giving what obviously the wrong answer but no that's not it either as soon as you touched him the burning still exists within him that's a fact it always will but the burning transformed into something else something that ignites whatever you touch whenever you touched his skin the mattress begins sinking inwards under Adam's weight. He doesn't even have a moment to process what's happening before the bed swallows him whole. Adam finds himself suffocating in darkness. He tries clawing around him, but his body remains immobile. Then he's falling, and all of a sudden he hits solid ground.
hair changed and everything. When he manages to pick himself up, he finds himself stuck in the middle of a kitchen. And he's dressed in an old Sunday, Sunday's best. He studied the room. From aging rose wallpaper, collecting of colorful magnets, used pen of child's drawing on the fridge, Adam knows exactly where he stands. A soft, ripping sound catches his attention. His eyes drift over the source off to his left where a small square kitchen table with three wooden chairs rest. Each chair is given hand-stitched cushions to soften the otherwise uncomfortable setting arrangement. A white tablecloth covers the table with the expectations of scarlet red drops splash here and there. A yellow piece of parchment papers rest in the in the center. Frantic black lettering bleeds through the papers, as if the author is running out of time and scribbled down what they could. Adam reels back in the horror at the sight of it. Not this. Anything but this. Red drips onto the paper from above, but he doesn't dare look up. The fresh scent of copper floods his sense. He knows the smell by heart. Normally, he thrives off the smell, but this... His legs give out, and he digs his palm into his eye so hard that he starts to see stars in the darkness. He can't look up. He refused to see it a second time. Someone hums next to his ear. He flinches away, still refusing to drop his hands, but the person persists. You don't want to face me? When he refuses to answer, the humming switches to his other. Then the singer asks a second question. Can't you even look to see how deeply you've hurt me? Claude fingers tried digging his hands away from his eyes. Oh! That's a twist! <laughs> I knew she was no better. They're sharp, painful, and they managed to get him to finally look up the face of what he's been dreading. A cold, dead corpse staring at him with bloodshot eyes. The whites glazed over by grayish film. She, the corpse, cocks her head at a 90 degree angle. The movement caused her clumped wet hair to tickle Adam's face. He whispers her name. The single action enrages her in causing her lips to peel back into a shriek that shatters the windows that makes the chairs rattle the topple rattle and topple over. Don't call me that. Don't ever call me that again. You betrayed me. You promised me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. Look at what he did to me. What they did to me. Look. Tears stream down Adam's cheek. She jerks his face closer to her bruised one purple and yellow spots stapled the base of her jaw trailed down the slope of her neck disappearing under the collar of the gray dressing gown she wore she wears I'm sorry he drugged to his feet by the woman with her hands clamped around his throat she tightens her grip as he remains limped, knowing this is the punishment he deserves for betraying her like this. For betraying his promise and her memory. I'm so, so. Oh, she snaps his neck with a sickening twist. Bang! Current day. Dower Hotel. 
Adam catapults out of his nightmare, trembles as his eyes dart around the room. The shadows are his demons, waiting to devour him. They hide behind TV screens, under the, under the bed and in his closet. He can't escape them no matter how hard he tries. Shiz. It's just a dream. He needs to calm down. Adam tries thinking about his hunt. The thrill of craving into flesh, of ripping through bones and snine? And watching as a pathetic life fades by his hand. But then that corpse face flesh behind his eyes, his eyelid, and he can't calm down. Then you appeared. A deep, seething anger rises within him. He grabs a hold of it. Anger is better than fear. So he directs all his attention towards you. This, whatever this feeling is, it's all your fault. These weird fantasies won't go away until you're gone and removed from his life. He needs to get to you. Now. But there's only one problem. After Adam got back to the hotel, he called Sharon and informed his reform of the situation. Shafron, in a typical fashion, took the ordeal in stride and offered to keep an eye out for you. He spent hours outside your apartment waiting to see if your car would show up. It never did. Back to me. Okay, Park Bend, Arizona. A bloody mess, gauze and medical tape he bought from the nearest convince convenience store, clogged up the bathroom trash can and covering up used pregnancy test and sanitary napkins. Dark smudge circles your eyes from the lack of proper sleep. A little fact that your aunt would curl her lip at wondering why you can't get your act together. Always a supportive woman, that one. If she'd taken the guns herself, maybe you'd be off worrying about your next online show and figuring out how to earn a bigger tip rather than avoiding your house like it got infested with cockroaches. But make it a singular cockroach with a knife. You stare at yourself in the bathroom mirror, finding exhausted tooth exhaustion tooth and nails gripping the edge of the sink to remain upright. A feat in and of itself. Your shoulders while taking care for the time being likely requires stitches instead of medical equivalent flex tape. But little fudge can uh, uh, afford medical insurance in this day and age. Not you, that too. Dang it all. After circling Parked Bin for hour and hours weighing your options between returning home or sleeping in your car, you decide on later as a safer bet. You don't really want to risk it for the biscuit by returning home, considering there's a possibility Adam might know your address. The attack itself could be a one-off incident for a thirsty serial killer hell-bent on getting some kind of action. But if that's the case, what did he take a picture for? Maybe you're overthinking this. After all, he could be saving them for himself as a sort of memento, as an occasion. You really can't be sure. <laughs> Maybe it would have been better if... No! You splash yourself with water and stain a questionable color in order to perk yourself up. Chin up, chest puffed. That's what your best friend Jay used to say before he moved out. The state to pursue his dreams in medical field. 
We plan on taking his advice and heart until the next, until the exit with the bathroom and met a gaze with a kid who stares at you with wide set eyes. He, in the middle of picking his nose, wiped it on his mom's sleeve. Wow, great kid. He never breaks eye contact. Upon seeing your grossed out expression, he cackles like a hyena. Yep, he's gonna grow up to become a serial killer. <laughs> wow. You bet Adam did the same things at that age. You put your money on it, <laughs> even. <laughs> the doorbell jingles as you step out of the air-conditioned gas station and onto the curb. S a sudden wave of vertigo hits and you finally lose your out ongoing battle with gravity. The arms sweep out to catch you. Soft green eyes met you're paired with a gentleman's smile. Oh, there's a nice gentleman. A polite gentleman. Are you alright, my dear? You look a little ill. <laughs> Guess that's what happens when a crazed man attacks someone with the minimal medical access. You know for a fact Adam is probably off smoozing in a fancy dancy hospital as their steak with shaved bits of gold sprinkle on top. The world can't be more unfair when a criminal gets better care than their victims. To the gentleman wearing a crisp bottom up slacks in 100% degree weather if you've seen weirder you just nod and distangled yourself from his hold. He waits until you're stable on your feet to let go. Ate one too many pancakes at a pancake house down on West Avenue. Challenged my friend to a contest, but you should see the other guy. Is that, a, is that why you got a nasty bloodstain shoulder? Your heart stops. Your hand flies. To cover your shoulder. You winced at the sudden touch. It stopped bleeding. How did it open up again? He cocks his head to the side. Let me give you a ride to the ER. I'm certain they'll take care of your problem in a jiffy. Thanks for the offer, but I can't afford to fork over hundreds of dollars as to sit in a room, let alone get stitched up. I appreciate your concern, but I'll manage on my own. Then how about this instead? I'm friends with a great doctor who runs a small, affordable, urgent care center. He even offers payment plans. If I take you there, I promise I can get your bill halved. What do you think? Dang, that's a tempting offer. <laughs> but one question lingers in your mind. What's in it for you? He adjusts the cuffs links on his button. He adjusts the cuff links on his button up. All I ask is for entertain entertaining conversation on the drive over. You provide me that and I consider it equal exchange. So how about it? Okay. It looks like this is going to turn into an episode. But, uh, interesting horror little episode. So, I was going to do all of this and let this be an extra Halloween thing. But, how about I decide on the two creepy games that I think would also be, to me, that I would enjoy uh, playing. This kind of gave me a slight twist there, seeing that figure. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, just your typical guy, but a little bit of s yandere swirl in it. And not to mention, there was a twist in her and his in, in the moment. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll save this and uh, try to get a little further. So I'm going to make episodes on two games, on the horror games. So this... This that you're seeing now is uh, the afternoon gameplay. So this 
is something that you guys will see of oh, these two games that I played. And then the uh, other one, the third one, if you guys have been seen that yet, that should be out at 5 o'clock for you guys. So, uh, I, I believe probably that one game I played last might be the game I may come back to in November. So, which is going to be November by the time if I do decide to make another episode out of these. So, I, I think I will, because I really do enjoy this uh, so far. Especially this story. Even if, even if this could be a demo, we'll try to still push as far as we can. So, I am curious to see how this ends all together. So, uh, but yeah. So, if you guys like this, please remember to hit that like button and please be sure to subscribe. So that way you guys don't miss out any content that comes out. I hope you guys still enjoyed the at least extend it probably to in the other games probably extra hours of Halloween-ness from me. Happy Halloween to you guys and please don't get sick from the candy just be a little bit more responsible for what you consume. So uh, have fun out there be safe and make sure you take it easy out there even if you go to the parties. So until then I'll catch you guys definitely on the next episode of something else that may be coming out on my channel. So until then Bye, guys.